bodies demand energy 24 hours a day, and the circulatory and respiratory systems help supply it. These systems work together, gathering and distributing oxygen and nutrients vital for energy production, growth, and life. The respiratory system brings air into our lungs. There, oxygen is absorbed into the bloodstream and distributed throughout the body by the circulatory system. The circulatory system transports materials our bodies need to stay alive and healthy. The main parts of the circulatory system are the heart, blood vessels, and the blood that flows through them. The heart is about the size of a fist. It's a powerful pump made almost entirely of muscle. Inside the heart are four hollow spaces called chambers. One side of the heart, pictured here in blue, pumps blood to the lungs, where the blood picks up oxygen. Blood comes back from the lungs to the other side of the heart. Because this side, pictured in red, pumps oxygen-rich blood through the entire body, the chambers on this side of the heart are thicker and more muscular. The heart circulates blood through about 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles of blood vessels. Would you like to try to listen to a beating heart? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Now I'm going to use the model as a reference. And from this model, I'm going to try to target right here. Let's see what we can pick up. Special devices can make sounds from inside the body louder. nice, smooth, rhythmic. What you're hearing is the rush of blood that the heart muscles are actually pumping. You're also hearing the valves opening and closing in the chambers of the heart. Pushed by the pumping heart, blood flows in just one direction. Valves inside the heart keep blood moving from chamber to chamber and prevent it from flowing backward. The thump, thump sound of your heartbeat is the sound of heart valves closing. A heart valve works like a door that only swings in one direction. See if you can open the door. Push really hard. Nope, not getting anywhere. OK, step back. Matt, Natasha, see what you can do. Very nice. Heart valves help push blood out through an intricate network of blood vessels to living cells everywhere in the body. Let's go see what this pumping action accomplishes, what it does to the blood. Come on. So each time the heart contracts, the walls pull together and pump out blood just like we could squeeze water out of this bottle. Each chamber of the heart is a pump. When the walls of the chamber squeeze together, they squeeze out blood, just the way you can squeeze water out of a plastic bottle. Whether you are resting or running, your heart pumps constantly. OK, so let's take a look at how hard working that pump is. So take a ball, if you would. The heart That's works great. automatically and incredibly okay. hard. No Two other muscle together. in your body Good. is as strong. If your arms were trying to keep up with your heart that whole time, can you imagine what your forearms would feel like? Keep going. How many times do you think your heart beats in a day? Oh, 
during the times that you're eating and playing and thinking and watching TV. Can we stop? So many times. A hundred thousand times a day. A thousand. What do you think your arm muscles would feel like if they did this a hundred thousand times? Can we stop? During operations, heart surgeons can have a unique view of the heart. Your amazing heart beats 24 hours a day, over 36 million times a year. Okay, go. Heart rate is a number of times a heart beats in one minute. This rate increases while you are exercising. And stop. Okay, real quickly, find your pulse. Now you can measure heart rate by finding your pulse, the throb of blood pumped with each heartbeat. You can feel this throb on the inside of your wrist or the side of your neck. Pulse rates vary from person to person. This is interesting. In response to the same amount of exercise, similar kind of exercise, we see some real differences but some real consistencies too, some real similar stuff going on here. We exercise harder, we need more oxygen, we need more nutrients, and our hearts respond, boom. And then as time passes, once we stop the exercising, we're all slowly coming back to a similar rest rate. The heart rate changes automatically, speeding up or slowing down to pump just the right amount of blood throughout the body. Blood travels inside blood vessels. We have three major types of blood vessels. The heart pumps oxygen-rich blood into arteries. Arteries are the vessels that carry blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. Arteries divide into millions of smaller vessels that connect with even smaller vessels called capillaries. Capillaries are packed into every part of the body. Some capillaries are so narrow that blood cells can move through them only in single file. Oxygen and nutrients in the blood pass through thin capillary walls, supplying cells with energy. Cells release carbon dioxide and other waste molecules, which pass back through capillary walls into the bloodstream. Capillaries connect to larger blood vessels called veins, some veins have one-way valves that help prevent blood from flowing backward. Veins return blood to the heart, blood that is now low in oxygen but high in carbon dioxide waste. The heart then pumps the blood to the lungs, where it releases carbon dioxide and takes on fresh oxygen. The cycle of circulation continues. Blood basically consists of a liquid called plasma and three kinds of blood cells. Medical technicians can study blood by separating out the syrupy plasma. Plasma contains dissolved nutrients, the food supply for every cell in the body. Plasma makes up slightly more than half the volume of blood. The three kinds of blood cells are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Red blood cells are small and very numerous. One drop of blood contains many millions of them. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to every living cell. Red blood cells also transport waste carbon dioxide gas from body cells back to the lungs. White blood cells help protect the body from infection by seeking out, surrounding, and killing invading bacteria. White blood cells also destroy worn out body cells. White blood cells have the ability to move on their own as they guard the body from harmful substances.
A third type of blood cell is the platelet. Platelets help our blood coagulate, or clot, preventing blood loss when a blood vessel is cut. So I'm here, what did you do here? Though it's a good idea to get help with cuts and scrapes, your body has an effective way of taking care of the problem. When skin is cut and blood vessels are torn open, blood flows to the wound. Bleeding cleans the wound and is a good defense against infection. Soon, blood platelets start attaching to the site of the injury and release chemicals that trap escaping blood cells with a microscopic web. Nearby blood thickens and clots into a scab. Healing takes place underneath the scab as new cells grow to mend the injury. Although our bodies manufacture new blood, it's important that not too much leaks out at any one time. How much blood do we have? The amount of liquid in this container is the amount of blood that a teenager has in his or her body. A teenager has about four liters of blood. An adult, somewhat more. Good job. As blood circulates through the body, it is constantly cleaned by the kidneys. The kidneys are a pair of very efficient filters, working all the time to remove waste chemicals carried by plasma in the bloodstream. The kidneys clean the entire blood supply hundreds of times a day. The waste cleaned by the kidneys is part of what is called urine. It is collected and stored in the bladder until it is convenient to let it pass out of the body. The circulatory system works closely with the respiratory system. The heart pumps blood to our lungs where red blood cells take in oxygen from the air we breathe. When we inhale, air enters the body through the nose and mouth. Nasal passages help clean, warm, and moisten air before it enters the delicate lungs. Breathing through the mouth does not clean or warm air as breathing through the nose does. Nasal passages contain tiny hair-like structures called cilia. Cilia work together with a sticky substance called mucus, helping to trap dust and germs before they are inhaled. Cilia wave back and forth, slowly sweeping up mucus and trapped particles. From the nose and mouth, air enters the windpipe, a hollow tube that is surrounded by rings of hard tissue called cartilage. Cartilage strengthens a windpipe and prevents it from collapsing. You can see how helpful cartilage is by building soft plastic tubes with reinforcement and without. So the air is coming down this tube called the windpipe and if we remove these lungs, we'll be able to see further where the air travels. Try taking a really deep breath. <sighs> OK. And the question is, what forces the air to move through this path and enter the lungs? Um, probably by muscle. A muscle. The lungs themselves aren't made of muscle. They're air sacs with lots of little tubes leading to them. Let's pull this out so we get a better view of the chest above it. This looks like a large panel of muscle, and it is. It's a huge one that sort of domes through our abdomen, and it's called the diaphragm. 
and we can take our diaphragm and cause it to shorten. And as it pulls down, it pulls air down into our lungs. Let's take a look at how air is drawn into our lungs. We can use this as a model of our chest cavity. As a model, this doesn't perfectly mimic our lungs, but this is a good way to understand how air enters and leaves our lungs as we breathe. When we pull down on this diaphragm, why does air rush down into the balloons? Take a look at it. What happens to the space, this space, when I pull down? It gets bigger. It gets bigger. And so what would, wanna, what would air want to do in a bigger space? Spread out. Fill it. Rush in and fill it. And when I push up, what happens to that space? Small. It gets smaller. It's smaller, and it's going to therefore force the air out. The air we breathe through our nose and mouth enters the windpipe, which branches into two tubes leading to the lungs. In the lungs, these air tubes keep branching and branching, resembling an upside-down tree. Eventually, they become tiny passageways no thicker than thread. At the end of each of these tubes is a cluster of air sacs. There are hundreds of millions of air sacs in the lungs, providing an enormous amount of contact with inhaled air. These microscopic air sacs are where the respiratory and circulatory systems meet. The air sacs have very thin walls, so they can readily exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide through the thin-walled capillaries that they touch. The brain controls the rate of breathing along with the heart rate providing the body with just the right amount of oxygen. The circulatory and respiratory systems work together automatically, carrying life-supporting energy to every part of our bodies every second of the day. <laughs> 